Danger, I'll be melting silver at around 2000 degrees Fahrenheit in an electric furnace. Improper use of this equipment could cause severe burns or a catastrophic fire. Well, hello YouTube, welcome to my channel. I'm Three Tips. And today what I'm going to do is uh, I've got a bunch of silver here I've been accumulating and there's probably about uh, oh, six or eight pounds of silver there. This is cement silver powder that I've used uh, copper to cement the silver out of the silver nitrate solution for my gold refining operations. And what I'm going to do today is going to go ahead and melt this up and uh, pour shots so I can run this through my silver cell and purify it to... Uh, real fine pure silver crystal so stand by we're going to do that right now okay to do this melt what i'll do is i'll uh, take this little spoon that i've got here in the cement silver and i'll fill up this aluminum channel and then use that channel to pour it into my crucible here it's heating up right now and then once i get the uh, metal melted i'll pick the crucible up and i'll pour it into this uh, container metal container of water here I'll have a big piece of ice down in there and when that molten silver hits that ice it'll uh, form tiny particles of shot that I can use in my silver cell. I've had my electric furnace warming up for about five minutes now. It's starting to get hot so what I'm going to do is go ahead and charge the uh, crucible with some powdered silver. about uh, 15 minutes since I started the furnace and it's uh, heated up pretty good. I'm going to add a little bit more silver here to top it off so I get a good pour when I go to make the shot. Silver's ready to be poured now. It's molten. Got the crucible about half full there. What I'm going to do is uh, pick it up, hold the crucible into the unit there, and then pour it in this metal container of water and make some shot. All this does is keep the water cold so it doesn't melt my big chunk of ice quickly. Now I'll add a big piece of ice from a cottage cheese container. It's a big round one. Now this is a frustrating bad angle for the camera here. You can't see me pouring it onto the ice, but there'll be some better shots of this later on in the video. Here I do a time lapse uh, segment with the uh, clock running up in the uh, upper center of the screen there. I prefer using this electric furnace over an open face uh, melt dish with the torch. This seems to work a lot better and go a lot quicker. It's very important that the uh, cement silver be bone dry here as I add it to that molten metal in the crucible. If there's any moisture at all in there, it could cause a steam explosion and spray hot metal everywhere.
I learned this trick from the jeweler. Notice how I hold the hot crucible inside the furnace with that graphite rod as I pour. This uh, keeps the heat on the crucible. Pulling that crucible out and pouring the metal would cause that crucible to cool down significantly. And by keeping it in the furnace, it keeps it hot and makes things go much quicker. The idea here is to convert that silver powder into shot or pieces that uh, present a large surface area to the anode basket in the silver cell. The powdered silver can't be used in the anode basket. It uh, seems to clog things up and so we have to pour this shot in order to make it work properly. I used to make silver bars for the uh, anode basket for the silver cell, uh, but that takes more time and uh, the silver shot seems to present more surface area uh, so that the silver will dissolve faster in the anode basket in the electrolytic silver cell. Having a large piece of ice in the uh, bucket of water there uh, helps break that silver, uh, molten silver stream up into uh, particles or shot. I've tried pouring the molten silver directly into ice water and it uh, forms long strips of silver instead of shot. By bouncing it off that ice cube or that piece of ice in that uh, metal container there, it uh, forms tiny pieces that are suitable for putting into the electrolytic silver cell anode basket. shut the crucible down and then we'll uh, take a look at the, nut, the silver that we got here got about half the silver done here still got quite a bit to go the limiting factor is the uh, ice once that ice is uh, all melted in that metal container then I gotta quit make some more ice I've melted the rest of the silver off camera here it's just more the same of pouring in the water and I've got everything in this bucket here. We're going to go ahead and take this empty out the water and uh, weigh the silver, see how much we got. The water in the metal container is tap water, and the ice that I used was made from tap water. There's no need to use distilled water for any of this operation. I will take this out and put it on the uh, electric burner out there in the fume hood and evaporate all the moisture off and then get a weight.
start weighing out the silver here. It's been dried off real well. So all we have is silver metal. The scale goes up to 2,000. So I'll go up to about 1,200 and stop here. There's 1258. The off color of the silver metal here probably comes from a little bit of oxidation. When I pour the molten metal through the air into the metal container of water. And there's probably some other metals such as copper and maybe some palladium mixed in with the silver. Well, as you can see from the totals here, I got uh, 4,666 grams of silver here, which uh, I guess I underestimated a little bit. It's 10.2 pounds of silver. And what I'll be doing now with this is running this through the electrolytic silver cell, get it to uh, very high purity silver crystal. This is some previously used electrolyte. What I'm going to do is go ahead and filter it. There's some sediment that's settled out in the bottom. I'm going to filter it into the uh, silver cell here. The electrolyte is uh, made of pure silver crystal dissolved in uh, dilute nitric acid. This is uh, blue because it's been used before and some of the copper that was in the impure silver shot has dissolved into the electrolyte, turning it blue. I'm going to rinse the filter down real good with some distilled water here. Try to get all the silver nitrate rinsed out of it. Now I'm going to add some distilled water to within a half an inch of the uh, top of the container here. Stir it up real good so that we got a homogenized uh, mixture here. Now I put the cover on. It's just a piece of cutting board with a hole cut in the middle. Some pegs to locate it so it's right in the center. Now I'm going to cover it up with a piece of paper towel. Hook the electrodes up here. This is the negative side from the power supply. I hook it to various places around the bowl here to get a good power distribution. Now I'm going to make up the anode basket. It's just a Rubbermaid uh, little container here with the lid and the center of the lid cut out. What I do with that is I've got a uh, shop vac filter here made of a Dacron type material. Uh, that's the number of it. You can buy those at Lowe's or on eBay. Just open it up here and what I'll do is double it up put it inside the uh, anode basket here now press it down with a tube hold it down with my chin and then just to fasten the, uh, the little red retainer ring onto the rubber made container to hold everything in place like so Now I'll use a sharp razor here to uh, trim away the excess material from the anode basket. Like so. It's got some holes drilled in the bottom. 
so that the silver as it dissolves can pass through the electrolyte and then start plating out on the bottom of the uh, of the stainless steel bowl. Now I'll insert the basket into the uh, cell and we'll go ahead and start charging the basket with some of this uh, 10 pounds of shot that I've got here. Cover up the entrance there so we're not getting all the impure silver shot and go ahead and start filling up the anode basket here. Here's the electrode bar. It's about two or three ounces of silver with a little uh, prong sticking up out of it. I stick that down in the anode basket and that provides a place for me to connect the uh, positive electrode from the power supply. Go ahead and put a few more scoops of silver on top of that to kind of bury it. Okay, the cell's all set up now. Go ahead and attach the uh, positive side of the electrode. Power supply to the electrode bar there. Here I've got an inline 3 amp fuse just in case we have a, uh, a short circuit in here. If the crystal grows up and makes contact with the anode basket, it'll short circuit, burn a hole through the anode basket, and ruin the silver. So I've got this uh, 3 amp inline fuse to uh, prevent that from happening. I'm going to set the uh, voltage for about 3.5 volts here. Okay, to help this process along, I'm going to go ahead and draw out some of the electrolyte and put it into the anode basket. See if we can get the current flow initiated. Okay, I've got a little bit of current flow now. Had to initiate the uh, flow by flooding the uh, anode basket with some of the electrolyte. And that'll come up as this thing warms up and gets in operation. Should be up over one amp, but it's only 0.2 right now. But uh, anyway, cells in operation. We're going to convert our uh, impure silver shot to fine silver crystal. Cells in operation. The amps are starting to come up a little bit there. Just takes a while for that electrolyte to uh, soak through the anode basket bag there. And what's happening here is the uh, impure silver shot that we made earlier is uh, having an electric current pass through it by means of that electrode bar there. What happens is it'll dissolve, pass through the electrolyte, and then plate out on the inside of this stainless steel bowl as absolutely pure elemental silver metal. The stainless steel bowl is three and a half liters uh, capacity. Uh, the electrolyte is made with silver nitrate. <clears throat> it's uh, Pure silver crystal dissolved in dilute nitric acid. I use 150 grams of pure silver crystal per liter. So there's about almost 600 grams of uh, pure silver crystal dissolved in the electrolyte there. Uh, as the silver dissolves in the anode basket, passes through that electrolyte, hits the uh, stainless steel bowl, plates out. Any impurities then that's in the silver will stay inside the basket and then we can recover that later on there might be some gold some platinum group metals that get left behind in the silver cell slimes inside that basket and uh, I've got some over here that uh, from previous runs and what I'm going to do with those is go ahead and uh, process those later on I'll make a separate video to show how to do that and get the uh, the other metals that are in these uh, silver cell slimes out and refined and that's it the silver cell is in operation and we're going to keep an eye on this it'll be in operation here about 10 days it should crank out about 1.5 kilos of pure silver crystal thanks for watching